man. Sounds much better, class. Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. It's the Drive to School podcast. It's the Live to School podcast because we're we're, we're right here. This is Kristen Sanchez. She's the events executive for Higher Things, and she's gonna. Um, I thought I was hosting this. I don't know. You just took off running. Hi, I'm Kristen Sanchez. I'm the events executive with Higher Things, and joining me this morning on this Drive to School podcast, I hope you're not in too much traffic, is Pastor Harrison Goodman. He's the content executive for Higher Things, and we're going to be doing some talking about what's coming up this Sunday at church, just to give you a little heads up. Hey, Pastor Goodman, how are you this morning? That was, you stole my thunder. I was intending to do that. That was my so. thunder, and you stole and it. And now it's mine. What are we doing today? We are talking about what's coming up in church on Sunday. Okay. We're in uh, the season of Easter, uh, the, the, the tail end of Easter, right before the Ascension. In fact, this is, uh, this is the Sunday before the Ascension. And so we, we are confronted head on with the fact that Jesus is going to the Father. And it's, it's actually a wonderful Sunday where he starts to talk to us about prayer. He says something that, that's um, not contentious at all. He says, ask in my name and it will be given to you. He says, ask anything in my name and the, it will be given to you. Those are all of the words that were written in that. Bible passage. Thank you for pointing out anything. And why are you leaning on this word anything? Because it can't possibly be true. I'm a sinner. I am a person who wants things that are not good for me. Okay, so there are, there are bad things to ask for. I guess you could say like, um, oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, if it be your will, um, please kick all the puppies. But I don't want that to happen. What kind of sinner do you think I am? That kind. Um... <laughs> But there's neutral ones like, right. oh, Lord God, your Father in heaven, uh, in the name of Jesus, can I have a pony? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have a pony. That, that's where you're going, right? Exactly. So obviously there's no such thing as God or prayer is broken or you're just too big of a sinner for God to ever answer you. Is that like where we're going with this? Something's thing? not working. Something. And if, he, if the book, if the he in the book mm -hmm. says that it's going to work a certain way and it doesn't work a certain way, mm -hmm. what does that tell me? It, it tells you that maybe you're doing it wrong and not praying wrong necessarily but understanding prayer wrong uh this is actually a gift to talk about prayer because more often than not we approach this passage uh with the word anything in mind mm -hmm. and not not just the simple fact that we get to ask so consider it this way um if you actually start praying the way you're supposed to, the way that Jesus taught you when he said you're, you're praying, how do we pray? Our Father who, who art in heaven. Art in heaven. With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children ask their dear father. The wonderful part about the way that our kids ask us for things is not that they actually expect to get them. That's a good point. Like, I mean, honestly, and I, I don't mean that to sort of lower expectations. I mean that the, the, the real true joy in this is that they can actually experience disappointment. I love disappointing my children. It's mm -hmm. just something that I think about sometimes. Um, or maybe it's not their job to sort out what's good or bad for them. Is it, is it their job simply to trust? Yeah. Simply to trust that they have someone who cares for them enough that they can at least ask. And maybe 30% of the time it's going to be yes? I mean, even if, so this, I want to get rid of the percentages okay. at all. So, I, I mean, because we can get sort of coy with the thing and say, God answers prayer in one of three ways. Yes, no, and later. And it's true, but it's not helpful to somebody who's actually looking for anything. Because the people who are looking for anything, like there's the people who say, God, if you really love me, give me a pony. And I, I guess we should probably have a talk and say, maybe God's love for you, just like your parents' love for you, isn't based on what they're buying for you. Um, but... But, but instead, it's, it's actually based on the care that they give you. Uh, for, for this, let's actually step back and sort of say, all percentages aside, who is your God? Our Father who art in heaven. Um, the idea that you can ask anything in his name and, and he will actually give you good gifts um, is, is not something to sort of say, all right, so how can I manipulate this to get more stuff for me? But, but rather... Where is God working good? Um, he says, ask anything in my name and it will be given to you. And, and this isn't sort of that we can be further away from Jesus. And I think that might be the problem with how a lot of times we approach prayer. Like, give me this thing so I don't need you anymore. Could it also be where it puts us in a position as Christians to try to figure out what is appropriate for us to ask for? So... 
don't worry about that. Like, honestly, it's I, you're already doing that anyway, right? I mean, it's there. Yeah, I, I spend a lot. Of, like, I'm pretty sure it would be appropriate to ask for a pony. Right. Um, I, and I wouldn't be... Pray recklessly, Sanchez. Pray recklessly as if you have a father in heaven who loves you so much that it's not your job to sort out what's good from evil. And, and in fact, prayer is not about getting stuff at all. See, this is the biggest thing. Prayer is never about stuff. Prayer is always about comfort. You actually learn this um, in in the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread, which is really the prayer that we mean every time we pray. It's, it's really just give, give me, me some thing. stuff, give me some stuff, Lord, give me some stuff. Um, because I don't want his kingdom so much as mine. I don't want his will so much as mine. I'm not so much concerned with his name as mine. Uh, evil, well, I keep doing it. Um, I, I, the forgiveness, I'm... Give me stuff. So here's the thing. Uh, God certainly gives daily bread to all people, even without their prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to recognize this and receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. In other words, if you never ever prayed once in your whole life, you would still have stuff. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of the people with the most stuff pray the least. And some of the people who pray the most have the least stuff. What if this was more about the thanksgiving? the comfort that comes from it. If you ask anything in God's name, knowing full well that he has redeemed your soul from death and hell, that he has promised you the resurrection of the body where you will have all these things that are good for you, that you will have the mansion and the place where you want to live uh, with, with the comfort that, that you need to hear. Along the way, as you are, are taught to go to your father, you are not doing it independently of the son. And this is, I think, maybe the place to focus on rather than the anything, the the Jesus name part. Prayer, if you're only going to measure it in terms of wins and losses, at best, God is a vending machine. And at worst, he is an enemy because he's not going to give you the things that you keep asking for. And you're not asking in his name anymore that way. Because it's so easy when I'm praying. I mean, it's, it's, it's not always easy to pray. And oh, when you finally get to the point where maybe you sort of muster that up to not, it's really hard to not sort of throw all your eggs in that basket. Especially when you read a verse that says, ask and it shall be given to you. Right. And so, okay, I did the work. It was hard and I did it. And so now yeah. when it doesn't come, it, it it creates sort of like a false trust of like, I okay, now it's mine and I wait. And then I wait with empty hands. I think there's a distinction between trusting in prayer and trusting in God. Because this is just it. Like what happens when you pray and God says no? Yeah. Um, and the impotence is always to make it a law question because it's something I did. So clearly I need to mean it more or do it more or get do more people to pray with me, do it better, find some fancy words. Um, let, let's skip over, you know, the, the basic way that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, the little children can do. Instead, we need something awesome. Um, and again, are, are we getting sort of closer to comfort or, or further away from it? Well, we're not looking for God anymore we're actually looking to replace him with the thing that we would make our God, the thing that we really need. And I don't mean to make this um, a, an attack because the people praying that desperately, yeah. it's real stuff. Yeah. Like it, it's, Lord, my health is failing. Lord, am I going to walk again? Lord, where is, is the actual hope that, that you have you? promised me in all of this? Where are you? Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's not that those are bad things to ask for. In fact, the Lord says, ask. Yeah. But rather, when we listen for an answer, I'm not going to measure the existence of God based on whether or not I got the things that I want any more than I'm going to measure the existence of my parents on whether or not I have a pony. I'm going to go back and say, rather, who is your God? This is, this is ultimately the question. I trust in God, not prayer. This is why he says, don't, don't, this is the magic spell to get stuff. Rather, he says, ask anything in my name. Mm -hmm. Focus on the name. Um, here you, you pray in God's name, in Jesus' name more specifically, because you pray as as well, specifically his sister. This is what it is to be adopted into his family. This is what it is to be baptized. You pray as God's sister. You pray with equal footing with him who has conquered death. So when he who has ascended into heaven pleads for you at the right hand of the Father, he, he doesn't even need to. He just gets to. Because the Father wants to hear you too. You are holy, redeemed from all sin. You have every bit of access to the Father. And the Father actually wants to give you all good gifts, so much so that when you ask for dumb stuff, he's going to actually steer that away. And when you ask for stuff that, that just it's not the right time for, he, he's going to make sure it happens in the right time. And, and it's that sometimes even the frivolous things that we don't actually need but just want, he gives to you anyway. So if, if we want to make sort of prayer just sort of a measurement of gratefulness, it always makes us seem miserly and spoiled. 
um, but rather if we make this uh, simply a, a way to find comfort in the Father's mercy. Here, go to him desperately, teary-eyed with the wrong words. Go to him with just that 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 sort of like that gut-wrenching, the spirit has to intercede for it because it's too either... Groaning's deep for it, it, deeper word. Those groanings too... Like, have you ever just wanted to like scream yeah. at God? Like, kind of have. Those are the right prayers then. Because those are the names, those are the prayers that, that are heard in Jesus' name. He groaned from the cross for you. There's a lot of comfort there, and there's a lot of um, invitation there. Right. To know that you don't have to have everything just right before you're brought to the one who's going to make it right anyway. Right. So, I, I, I mean, like, if you want to actually deal with this head on, like, ask anything in my name, you, you also have to deal with the fact, like, one verse before, like, literally mm-hmm. the verse before, mm-hmm. Jesus says, in this world you will have tribulation. Like, mm-hmm. you think nobody just forgot to pray for not that? Yeah, no. Like, the, the reason he's going to sort of put, ask anything in my name with you're going to hurt, um, is, I think, probably just a slap in the face for anybody who just is ready to say, well, can I pray for not hurting? Mm-hmm. Maybe swell. Mm-hmm. A little bit of that would be, Lord have mercy yes, on. Please. Yeah, um, I hurting sucks. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I, I'm I'm kind of a wimp, and so if it comes to sort of me suffering, I don't want anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. And here we're actually again called to Jesus' name, who suffered for us. Mm-hmm. And now I want my prayer rooted very firmly in suffering, very firmly in that cross, very firmly in the things that he would do for me, um, there will be tribulation in this world and prayer will not fix it, but Jesus has already overcome it. Yeah, it entirely takes away the impetus from something that I have to do. Well, because prayer was not given as a burden. It was given as a gift. Mm -hmm. It's it's always made into a burden. That's the devil. Yeah. Let him do that. But hear it as a gift. The devil can't make anything by himself, so he can only take the things that God gives him and and sort of pervert them. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to take prayer, which is a good gift given to you as a Christian, a daughter in Christ. And he wants to make that a a curse, a burden, something you have to carry. Do right or else you won't get. And the Father reminds you, well, I've been giving you daily bread long before you were taught to speak. Hmm. Um, I I managed this whole shebang long before you came into this world. I'll keep it going until the sun returns in great glory. Mm -hmm. Until then, when you're worried, pray. pray. And hear the comfort. Remind yourself who it is you're praying, not only to, but in the name of. Mm. Like, you're simply a part of the Trinity interacting with himself. Well, because that name has been placed on us. Yeah. And so if you are a part of the Trinity interacting with himself, because you are praying to the Father in the name of the Son. I know, you are brought into the economy of the Holy Trinity. Um, Because you pray uh, in the name of of the Son to the Father in the Holy Spirit. So, all right, you watched the whole inner play out on the cross, right? The whole thing. Mm -hmm. So there was a place in time where the son was rejected by the father, where the father told the son no. Right. Okay, you get to be a part of that. But you also get to be a part of the victory then. So the son uh, was told no by the father. Let this cup pass from my hand. And you know what? You actually know how that story ends. So when you pray... There's even rejoicing in the no's. Yeah. Because we have a God who knows what good gifts are best for us. Right. When, 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 when the Father tells you no, because you're praying in the Son's name when it's told no, that's a cross. Okay. Crosses hurt, but they always lead to empty tombs for you. They can't hold you anymore. Christ is risen from the dead. Take a deep breath and pray with joy. That's comfort. Okay. Well, I guess I think that's, that's a, good. Can that be a podcast? I think that's good. I'm for not today. in charge of this podcast. Um, apparently. thanks for joining us this morning on the drive to school. I hope that uh, hit you as much as it hit me. Thanks for joining us, guys. Okay, bye. bye. Can I say that? You may. Bye.